had her get my phone out and make sure I shut it off.
Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the anointing that we feel at this very moment in this place. And Lord, you know that we are all engaged in the same fight. It is a fight of faith to believe that you are still the healer. Just as Pam just prayed, we are speaking healing into your lives right now. That in the precious name of Jesus, no weapon that has been formed is going to prosper against you. Beloved out there, Jesus walked about healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Sickness and disease is raging around this world. The pestilence, it is raging because of the demonic forces. But we have a savior. We have a deliverer. We are healed by the stripes of Jesus and we fight that fight of faith. For those of you watching now, wherever you're watching from, I want you just to lay your hand upon yourself. If there's a part of your body that needs healing, lay it right where it is. But there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. When Peter and John went into the temple of the gate called Beautiful, the lame man cried out, alms, alms, alms. And they said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give to you. Rise up and be healed in the name of Jesus. Sickness and disease is from the pit of hell. Jesus defeated the pit of hell. We have been given the victory. We have been given the power over demonic forces that try to bring sickness and disease. And we speak to you and declare to you today, healing through the name of Jesus, healing through the blood of Jesus. Father, you know every single person that is watching right now. Lord, I pray not only would the healing power of Jesus flood them, but Lord, they would get on their phone, they would get on their whatever, and they would share that with other people, that Jesus still heals today. We are in the midst of a storm, but the healing power of Jesus is in the midst of that storm. And we thank you for that. We give you praise and honor and glory. And now, Lord, we are going to confess what your word says, that we are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Lord, you yourself speak things that are not as if they were. We speak it forth now. I speak to every one of you to speak it forth also, that you are healed 
by the stripes of Jesus. Now, Father, we thank you that this is the day that you have made. We choose to rejoice in it. We are engaged in a fight, but that is the fight of faith that we are coming through victorious. We went into this fight victorious. We are in the middle of this fight victorious, and we're coming out victorious. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in the precious name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. We welcome you today to Victory Christian Center. Going to have somebody else welcome you here, our children's pastor, Pastor Morgan. By the way, I think she's going to be sharing, but she's going to be doing uh, some of these uh, broadcasts uh, for the children of our church at Victory and others in your neighborhood. So we're glad that you're here today. Just turn to that person next to you in your living room or wherever you are and just declare to them, this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice in it. Pastor Morgan, you got some candy. I do. Whoa, is that for me? Uh, well, sure, I'll let you have it. <laughs> Good morning, Victory, and thank you so much for joining us. I've got a word I want to share with you this morning. I'm going to read to you from Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ. But this morning, I want to remind you to check your filter. And I don't mean your furnace filter. Maybe you do yeah. need to check that. Do that after service. But this morning, I want to encourage you to check your filter because the next part of this scripture, I believe, is the filter we've got to check. This is Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. We got a lot of that going on right now. Yes. We're not getting good yeah. reports. If there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So I think we've got to check our filters and make sure what we are allowing in is these things. So maybe the news, maybe it's time for you to turn off the news. I know sometimes we feel yeah. like it's our duty to be informed, so we got to watch the news. But I think it's so easy to become consumed instead of just informed. So if that's you, I'd encourage you, turn off the news. Maybe it's time for you to unfollow somebody. I know I've been spending way too much time on social media lately because what else am I going to do? You know, I can only clean so much. I'm sure there's plenty more I could clean, but I'm tired of it, you know? So I'm spending all this time on social media, but you know what? I found there are a lot of people when it comes down to this and we've got so many opinions that That's I needed right. to unfollow. So I want to encourage you to do That's that. Right. We got to make sure we're feeding our faith right now yes. and not feeding our fear. So check your filter. Also, it is our favorite Sunday in City Park. It's the last Sunday of the month and that means candy bar Sunday. So on the last Sunday of the month, if the kiddos can tell me their scripture verse word for word. Now I am a stickler. They like it when Will or Shane or Ty does it because they're, they're not as hard as Miss Morgan. But if your kiddo can send me a video of themselves doing the scripture verse for this month, I will get them a candy bar. I will find a way to get them their candy bar. Awesome. Now, if they scroll down a couple of videos ago, you can find the motions and the words to the memory verse. So have them practice first and then send me those videos. And last but certainly not least, I'm going to remind you that we are still helping out the community. We're yes. being a little more creative. You know what? I remember when Ding Dong Ditch was a bad thing. I got a Ding Dong Ditch twice this week, and it was so much fun. I got to go up, leave stuff on the, on the porch, ring the bell, and stand back six feet. Now, I didn't actually ditch, but I ran back six feet, <laughs> and it was so much fun. So we are still here. We are still reaching out to the community, but we need you to partner with us in order to keep doing that. So there are three ways you can give. Snail mail. It's always a great option, right? Make sure you're sending it to our P.O. Box uh, number, though, because the doors are locked. You can give online at our website, victorylafayette.org, or you can text to give. And our finance director, Heather, will be leaving all of this information in the comments for you. All right, well, now on to the main event. I am done. I'm going to hand it over to Pastor Bill and Pastor Pam. I know they're who you're really here for, and you owe me a memory verse. Whoa! <laughs> well, give Morgan a hand out there. She's our children's pastor, and she does an absolutely awesome job. My beautiful wife, Pam, is going to come over and join me. And we are glad that you're all watching us. 
Victory Christian Center online, my wife Pam and I, and we just love you. And for all of you that are part of Victory, we miss all of you. Uh, it's It's been an interesting time, yes. honey, but we may have some people that have never watched us. Last year, or last Sunday, it's my understanding, Morgan said we had uh, over 1,200 people that had hit on, on it. Is that correct? Am I? I'm not sure, but... Yeah, I think, is that correct, Morgan? You can give me an, yeah, over 1,200. I don't know if they watched the whole thing or not, but there were 1,200 hits on the webpage. So uh, praise God, that's that's awesome. Uh, it's an interesting time frame we live in, honey. Yes. But we're going to be talking today about the power of God's love and how this is also a tremendous opportunity for all of us to reach out and there are some strange things that are being happen out there. Uh, strange things, like you say, on, on the media, and we're to be conformed, not conflicted in our, in our belief system, but uh, people are saying that, well, this is God doing something or whatever, and somebody else, uh, a, a big name entertainer the other day said, uh, I think God is, 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 is involved in this to teach us all a lesson. And uh, I don't know, it just doesn't ring right in my spirit. I know what I believe. That, that's a fact. So uh, we're going to share some of that today. And you know what you believe. And I believe God's a good God. You know, uh, if you just believe the word, John 10, 10 says, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. So if you just evaluate people's uh, words, things that people <clears throat> say, news reports, um, the thief, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And yes, Jesus defeated him on Calvary, but that defeat is in effect for those who receive Jesus. And so those that don't know the Lord, they have no weapon to stand against the power of the enemy. We intercede. God is merciful. He rescues people. The Holy Spirit goes about really convicting people of their need for God. Yes. And so if we need God, there's a reason. It's because he's a good God, and he'll take care of us. And I want to read from uh, Romans 8, 37, because when we talk about love— um, the book of Romans is a great book to know what you need to know about believing what Jesus did. Romans and Hebrews, two best books to read, I believe, in the New Covenant to understand what you have. You have a God yes. who loves you, who protects you, who has always loved and protected you. But God's wrath is on sin. And so when, when we sin or when people are living in sin, the door is open for the enemy to use that force to destroy. Yeah. But when you know Jesus, the blood of Jesus covers you, you can repent and get right back in right standing with the Lord as far as your fellowship. And so there's an opportunity for us as believers to always walk in the love of God. And it says, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. What things? Well, if you read all of Romans, you'd know the mm -hmm. different things he said. But I would tell you today, yet in all these reports, all these things, all the, the world is seeing, all we're standing against, we are more than conquerors. Yes. Why? Because God loves us. Yes. God is not going to hurt you. God loves yes. you. And it goes on and says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers, and those are real, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. When I read the word, I read it personally. So when I read that, I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate me, me from the love of of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You know, <clears throat> Pam, when I, when we were in Tulsa, when we first got there, well, about a year after we were there, we uh, started a Victory Bible Institute. And uh, I'll never forget, of all the things that, that, that took place in my life at Victory Bible Institute, the one assignment that truly impacted and changed my life was Linda Turner. And uh, today, I, I mean, I still get emotional thinking about it. But uh, during the class, and Linda, if you're watching this, I'll, I'll forever be grateful for it. Uh, she taught normal class on the character of God. And, uh, I, you know, I, I was learning about God, but I didn't understand why God would love me because I didn't love myself. Yeah. And I knew what all I had done. And uh, so she gave us a homework assignment. 
I, I didn't realize how big of an assignment it was going to be until I got home because I'd spent very little time in a concordance. Now, for all of you, you probably know what that means, but for some of you, it's a dictionary of the Bible with every word in the Bible in it that you can look up in alphabetical order. And she said, I want all of you to go home tonight, and I want you to read every word on love or derivative of the word love uh, that's in the concordance and, and read it in your Bible. And I thought, well, this won't take long. <laughs> you know, that Bible is full of love. The concordance is full of love. And when I finally finished that project, I think it took a couple hours to really read every scripture. And uh, it really impacted my life. You cannot read uh, through the entire Bible about all of the love that God has for us without realizing that God is who he says he is, First John 4, 8. He's the God of love. And that really changed my life. And uh, to this day, uh, I mean, God doesn't want us to sin. My goodness, no. Sin, as you just said, yeah. opens the door to the devil. Jo James 3.16 is a word from God to all of us. He doesn't want us into self. So, so all sin comes from self. You're just doing what pleases you. Yeah. And it says that when that happens, you open the door to confusion and every evil work. And so God is not going to punish you and beat you up and hurt you because of that. He's going to say, no, don't go that direction. It's going to destroy your life, just like any parent. Yeah. You're not going to go in and beat your child up because he's doing wrong. You're going to sit him down and try to work with him and train him. Speaking of parents, I have my spectrometers on, oh, so that yeah. means I can, I can see in those living rooms again. <laughs> and, uh, and, and we have some of the children that uh, turn to their parents. I wasn't even thinking about kids watching this and, and, and said, can Pastor Bill really see us? And yes, kids, I'm, I'm watching right now out there. And I have a book, Dear Pastor, it's by a pastor who commissioned this project, and I love it, to have the kids in his church and in his community uh, write things that he could share with the people. And I want to share a few things with you kids out there and for your parents. This is a cute one. These are actual letters that little kids wrote. Dear Pastor, I've been a good Christian all my life, even when nobody was looking, and I really didn't have to. And that's Roseanne. She's only 10 years old. <laughs> and this one I really like. Some of you that have boys and girls will understand this one. Dear Pastor, did God make girls smarter than boys? My big sister says so. Yours truly, Ryan. He's age nine. And then this one, dear, this I like. Dear Pastor, we have three Bibles in our house. My mother reads the Bible every day, but my father reads the sports page. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll have one more. This little guy is, is Mark. He's age seven. This one I really like. Dear Pastor, how much money do you collect in that plate on Sunday? I think maybe I'd like to grow in that, go in that business when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that is so cute, honey. But you know, we're going to pray for people. And matter of fact, maybe we should pray right now for people that, that uh, they're right in the middle of, of this thing. Uh, diagnosed. We know we've had some in the community that have been diagnosed, uh, some across the country, obviously, that have already died. And, uh, and, and, and we want to pray for all of you. But we also want everybody to know this. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. You, and when we go through adversity, when we go through the storms of life, it is important that our strength be built up, almost similar to our immune system. Your immune system should always be strong, but when you're going through an attack, you really want that immune system strengthened. Uh, drink water, get rest, chicken noodle soup, all that kind of stuff that are just common sense items, honey. And sleep, uh, yes, sleep. That rest. one I've been good at. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but you need plenty of sleep, <laughs> plenty of rest, plenty of juice. And we're going to talk a little bit about some things that uh, that they're recommending in just a few moments and in, in the word here, but. I, I do pray for families right yes, now that, you, that maybe you have had, we, we know some people in this community, they've been diagnosed uh, positive, and now they're quarantined in their home, their family's taking care of them. Father, I, I know that sometimes in the midst of the storm, yes. it doesn't seem like it's a place that we could have joy. But Lord, your joy is our strength. And we do speak strength to every person out there. We pray for those that have been diagnosed positive, And we do, as we prayed earlier, declare healing yes. in their body. Jesus. We pray as they go through this process, we pray Jesus. healing Jesus. in Jesus' name. We pray safety and protection for all of the rest of the family members. And we pray that in Jesus' name, we pray for the nations of the world. We pray for Indiana. We pray for Oklahoma. We pray for all of the states 
needs uh, in in uh, our country and for around the world countries, Lord, and for the leaders. Lord, we just Thank lift up Jesus. President Trump at this time and Vice President Cheney. Uh, uh, Cheney. Oh. Glory to God. <laughs> That's a flashback. <laughs> Our Vice President, I, my mind just Pence. went blank. Pence. Our, yeah, pre, Vice President Pence, I'm sure he's watching. Vice President Pence, <laughs> excuse me. And Vice President Pence, and we pray for them. We pray for their health. We pray for wisdom. We yes. pray for supernatural you, guidance by the Holy Spirit. And we pray there is a hedge of protection around them as they make decisions oh, to bring us through this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can you, can you believe I forgot his name on live television? Yeah, well, thousands it, and it, thousands it of people watching. It happens to all of us. <laughs> <laughs> but we're talking about love, sweetheart. Yeah. And you know, the Old Covenant is full. Of De Deuteronomy talks about God's love. You shall love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, all your soul. Jesus, when he was asked what is the greatest commandment, said the same thing. We love God as we love, and we love our neighbor as we love ourselves, and that that love is so important. Yeah, I was reading uh, in my Bible reading, I'm in Deuteronomy right now, and um, God's reminding them, the younger generation, yeah. that he's going to take into the promised land. And uh, I love what he says. It's in uh, Deuteronomy, I think it's chapter, it's not chapter 6, I think it's chapter 7. And he says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And he tells them, you shall love the Lord, your, your God, with all your heart. That's chapter 6. With all your, with all your heart. Yeah. All your heart. Everybody say, all your heart. All your with heart. all your soul. Yeah. With all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them. Teach them diligently to your children. And yeah. you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. Uh, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. And he goes on in verse 7, and he tells them, you know, I didn't, um, I didn't choose you because you're a large group of people. I didn't choose you because of who you are. I chose you because I love you. And you're a special treasure. He calls them a special treasure. Uh, God calls us special treasures. And so his love for you is not based on your performance. His love is based upon the blood of Jesus that was shed for you because he said, I so love the world that I'm giving my only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. And I made that personal, but that's what God was saying. God so loved you that he gave his son that through his crucifixion, through his death, through his burial, through his resurrection, that you would be able to experience the love of God. And so today we need to determine our hearts to know what the love of God is. And sometimes uh, that's hard to do in Ephesians. It talks about the love of God in Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. And uh, I prayed that prayer over my life several years ago when I didn't understand the love of God. Um, you know, I had a grandma... Uh, who loved us dearly, she did. But she was always saying to my sister and I, God's going to get you girls. <laughs> He's going to get you girls for the way you treat your mother. And we knew how we treated mothers, so we considered ourselves God. <laughs> but in the end, God did get us. In fact, you know, sometimes when we think about we're still worshiping, still praising God, still singing for the Lord, he did get us. <laughs> but not in the way we thought he was going to get us. And so, you know, God... Uh, God does want to receive you. He wants to get you in a position to know him and to know his love because perfect love casts out all fear. And fear has torment. And that's what our society is facing today, terrible torment. But if you don't know the love of God, it says the love of God was perfected yeah. in Jesus Christ. And as he is, so are we in this world, 1 John 4, 17 and 18. Yeah. Then it goes on and says, Perfect love cast out all fear because fear has torment. So it's important today, read Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. Yes. Say it over yourself yeah. that I would know the height and depth and length and breadth of, of the love of God for his family. He talks about this is his family. We are his family. And he wants us to know that love. And then it goes on. It says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. Yes. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. And so God demonstrated his love when he sent Jesus to the cross. 
He did that for you and for me. And he wants us to know that love. And when we know that love, perfect love, it's a love that's unconditional. It's agape love. Then we have no reason to fear. And then the very end of that scripture yeah. in uh, 1 John 4, 18 says, we love him because he first loved us. It's a good word, honey. <clears throat> you know, God loves us when he's good, when we're good. God loves us when we're bad. And that was good for you and your sister because I heard some of the stories, that yeah, you, we, uh, things you did with your mom. Yes, yes. But, but uh, thank God, God is a God of love. We need to pray for your mom. Um, uh, Lou Beal, who's really one of the founding members of this church, uh, her husband, your father, Chris's father, up in heaven, uh, and uh, she's sequestered in a nursing home. The girl, you haven't been able to see her for three weeks. Three weeks now. But Father, we lift up Lou out Thank there you, and Jesus. others that are in, yes, in, in nursing, nursing home homes, situations. Yes. And we pray for the families. Yes. Lord, to just fill the void of not being able to actually see and touch and be with their loved one. But we also thank you that those loved ones are safe in a secure environment, thank you, too. Jesus. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, you can look at the book of uh, Luke chapter 10 or turn over there. We're going to be uh, talking about uh, uh, the Good Samaritan. But <clears throat> Jesus said in uh, John chapter 15, Verse 9, verse 17, it's the conclusion of him sharing on love. And he says, I give you a new commandment, and this is my commandment. Uh, you know, sometimes I get carried away with discipline. I know, but, but uh, Jesus never said, this is my request. This is my hope that you all love one another. He said, no, this is my command. I'm giving you a commandment. I am commanding you to love one another. And this is the time. When people uh, are, uh, I love what Morgan did with the uh, uh, video. If you haven't seen it, uh, get on Facebook, Victory, and watch Morgan's teaching to the children on Don't Be a Scaredy, scaredy cat. cat. And yeah. I love it. Don't be a scaredy cat. Uh, the, 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 the enemy's biggest tool is fear mm -hmm. and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And they work hand in hand. And people talk about, well, what about depression and all this other stuff? I believe those are manifestations of fear and anxiety. If you can nip fear and anxiety in the bud, you're never, ever, yeah. ever going to entertain them. But until we understand the victory that we already have, that God has given us the victory and that we walk by faith, not by fear. We walk by faith and not by, anx by anxiety. That's why uh, Paul said in four. Uh, uh, Philippians 4, four 6, yeah. be anxious for absolutely nothing. nothing. And sometimes you can start to look at things and you can start to entertain them. What you entertain, you will download in your spirit and in your mind. And that mind is where the battleground is. And, and there are people out there that need what we have. We don't need to sequester ourselves from the standpoint of, I'm going to clean a closet. I'm going to mow the grass. I'm going to do this. We need to be thinking, God, how do you want to use me? The Good Samaritan was used mightily by God as he was walking down the road. And you may be saying, well, wait a minute. I'm not going to be walking down the road. Well, I don't know if we yeah. can't come out of our house or not, but I've been to the grocery store. I'm not recommending any of you go, but I went to the grocery store. I uh, went out and did something. What did I do? Went to, oh, went to DNR market and got something. And, but, but I noticed the people that are out there there are some of them that are fine, but there are a lot of them that look like they're, they're really concerned. Yeah. And honey, this is a great That are delivering the mail it, it's not shut down and so you can write somebody a note I've written many notes over the years and I have received many notes over the years yeah and uh, I keep those notes that I receive a lot of them um, in my office and you know on a day when I need to be encouraged I read those notes uh, we can do that through Facebook we can do it through text um, we have opportunity to as we're led by the Holy Spirit yeah. If the Holy Spirit's asking you to do something, uh, follow through with it, even though it may seem 
like it's a little hard to do or maybe you think well they wouldn't even receive uh, me calling and saying that to them it's very important yeah. that we continue to to reach out even though we can't actually touch people physically we can touch people with our words our words are powerful Jesus gave us the ability to speak into existence those things that are not even though they don't appear right now that way we can begin to speak them over people who are struggling maybe in their body maybe people that um, and, and I would just share this if there's people that you don't have things quite right with this is a good time to get them right yes because uh, offenses uh, cause terrible anxiety in people's lives they don't realize it but that anxiety then opens the door to sickness and disease so if you have some things that that aren't right get them fixed you know ask God to forgive you and if necessary maybe God will have you call and maybe you don't even need to talk about what was wrong just give a good word to that person that will bring life and wholeness to them you know Pam I'm glad you said that because there are some practical things that are common sense things that tie in scripturally that we really need to understand uh, I, I read, read this uh, book it was it was uh, by a, a minister but it talked about how fear and anxiety depress the immune system and that your immune system needs to be strengthened whenever you're going through something that like we're going through right now and that if you just remember that cast down fear cast down anxiety and speak and and just believe the word of god and what the power of the holy spirit is showing you and uh, and and also I, I just a couple of practical things i just thought about i was watching them last night by a doctor that I really trusted this doctor. How many of you know what I'm talking about when you say you're, you're listening to somebody and you can feel the spirit in them yeah. and it's like, I can trust that person. And uh, w w what it is was uh, th this doctor was saying, you need to wash your hands frequently. We are finding the research now that much of what is happening that is transmitted while it is coming from other people, it, it is transmitted off of the hands. And, the, and, and he was telling the tremendous importance of continually washing your hands. We talked about that last week. But also not touching your face with your hands because there is a direct relationship now they're finding of the transmission into these areas through your hands and every once in a while i do this one i i wash my hands frequently i try not to touch my face but it said they are finding now a correlation between putting your finger in your nose and sometimes and, and sometimes I'll, I'll do that it's like a little tickle or something like that and they said we don't have the total research yet but make sure you're keeping your finger away from your nose and out of your nose and when I heard that, I thought, I don't have to wait for the total research. <laughs> and you don't have to wait for the total research either. So turn to that person in your home and say, keep your finger out of your nose, off your face as much as you can, wash your hands frequently, and we become the carriers of God's love everywhere that we go. Honey, God is love, and the greatest gift is love, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. The, the, the story of the Good Samaritan could be a story of us today, all of us. Victory Christian Center people, and I believe we're talking to people in our church who are doing this. But out there on the highways and byways of life, it's a story of, of, of a man in Jerusalem who was going to Jericho, and uh, he, he got out on the road, and he was taken over by robbers and thieves and beaten, and uh, he was laying on the side of the road. We got a lot of people on the side of the road right now who need what we have, they truly do. Yeah, they're not, we may not be able to see them, but we hear about uh, situations we've heard about a lot of situations oh, yeah. this yeah. week that we were able to um, we've also made calls but we've heard about different family members extended family members that are going back and forth uh, with with things that somebody calls somebody and then we get the message yeah. well we can stand in the gap for that situation we can speak to that situation okay. we can bind the work of the enemy over that person the love of God reaches out even to those that they that are not known to us personally and in jesus name we have that opportunity every day to make an effort to uh, reach out whether it's on the phone or, or however we're doing it in jesus name 
<clears throat> we just got another prop up here, but I think it's to enhance our voice okay. or something like okay. that. But, uh, but it, th this is so true, and I, I want to I tie it together with the Good Samaritan because, there, l like Pam just said, there are people out there who need what we have. And today we have so much technology available to us, not to get on and look at all the junk, but to use it as a tool to go into somebody else's world. And that there are people out there who just need to be encouraged and exhorted and edified. The Good Samaritan was was on the road apparently but what happened was and in this Luke 10 you can just follow through the story right now as we paraphrase it but but you know the, this the, the guy from Jerusalem going to Jericho got beat up and robbed and he left on the side of the road said he was half dead that also meant he was half alive and uh, and all of a sudden uh, here comes a priest down the road and and sometimes i think we can all be like the priest and the levite or maybe i should say I can be. I'm in a hurry. I'm preoccupied. I'm about my business. I'm about my plan. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm coming down the road and there's somebody on the side of the road that's hurting and they need what I have. But I don't see them because I'm focused on something that I want to do or what I need to accomplish yeah. instead of seeing that person. This was a description of the priest. The priest saw the need, and he saw the guy. He went over on the other side of the road. I don't know this for sure, but in my spirit, I believe he did it to ease his conscience. I believe he didn't want to confront the situation because he had something more, more important, important to do. What is more important than rescuing people? N nothing. And I told Pam the other day, we have been blessed financially. We really have been. And, uh, and, and I said the other day, I said, we need to start carrying uh, some of the blessings that we've been given because we're going to be somewhere and we're going to see somebody and the Holy Spirit's going to say, I want you to give to them. Now, you may be out there and you may say, wait a minute, I don't have anything to give. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. It may not be $50 or $100. It may be 10 It may be 5 And you may say, no, no, I'm out of money. Then it may be a smile. It may be a, a word. It may be a phone call. There's, there, if, if we're about the Father's business, we're going to be yes. looking for the hurting people. Priest, he should have been about the Father's business. Instead, he was in a hurry. Then comes the Levite. You'd think the Levite, another minister, you'd think the Levite would be uh, looking to, for, to help that man. He looks at the man, he sees the problem. Both of them had the ability to meet the need. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm going awfully long here, but jump right in there. No, because, but both of them had the ability to meet the need. You and I have the ability to meet the needs of people. All of our people, even if they're not part of Victory Christian Center, they're out there right now, they have the ability to meet the needs of the people that are out there. And, and all we got to do is be receptive to the Holy Spirit. You know, I was really blessed uh, the other day. I had Facebook on and I saw Patricia, who's in our worship team. And uh, I heard her say, I asked God, what could I do for him today? Because I'm home, I can't really leave my house. And, uh, and God told her that she needed to, to pray for people. And uh, I'm sure when she got on there, I know Patricia, she probably thought, well, I'll just do a very short word. But after she got on there, the word that's in her began to yeah. come out. Uh, she began to share. And I know, I know she didn't plan to be on there as long as she was. But all the things that she said were, uh, her voice is very calming, uh, very quiet. Uh, and so I believe that God used her gift of who she is and how he's made her to uh, just share the love of God. And that's what it felt like was the love of God, like the love of God was coming through her voice as she shared and prayed for people. You know, uh, that was something that happened because she asked God, what could I do that would help you? You know, the Lord has all of us here to be his helpers. You know, yeah. we're ambassadors, <clears throat> it says, in the word of God. But, uh, you know, we're, we're also servants of the Lord, first and foremost. And so he calls us brothers and sisters, which we are of Christ, because we're in the family of God. But we're, Jesus came to serve. We're here to serve. And so as we ask the Lord, there's all kinds of opportunities, I believe. And, and God sees things that we don't see. But he will quicken us to those things if we're listening and asking. And you may not hear it like Patricia did that morning right away.
But throughout your day then, if you've told God, you know, whatever you have for me to do today, just show me. And he will show you. And that's finances. That's a good word. It's, it's, it's a smile. Uh, a couple of Sundays ago, three or four maybe, I took off real early to come over here and I was preaching. And um, so I went by Starbucks. And when I got to the place to order, I ordered and then realized I forgot my purse. And uh, so I, I, went, I told them, never mind that order, I forgot my purse. They said, it's okay, you just come to the window and we'll take care of you. I thought, well, that's really a blessing. Well, then just, just last week, I was going through Starbucks. I didn't know that that particular one was gonna close. It did close, but uh, I went through in the morning and um, this girl, when I went to pay her, I had a $20 bill and uh, I thought, now I better get my, my cleanser out, you know, so I can wipe my hands off, wipe the money off, wipe everything clean. Wow, isn't this different? I mean, you got, there's 16 steps to just getting something to drink. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm all ready for that. And I felt like the Lord said, just, just tell her to keep it. And uh, I, I thought, well, okay. And so when she came, I gave her the 20 and I said, just keep the change. And I thought she was going to cry, but it was, it was the love of God. It, it was because God loves her. And I didn't know, maybe she didn't get to work. The, well, I know she didn't get to work in that store the rest of the week. But there's things like that. You know, um, it, was that a big tip? Yeah, yeah. It, it was a big tip, but it wasn't really a tip. It was a gift that God was giving her. And so uh, I encourage you, a smile, uh, sow seed in people's lives. It will, it will reap a harvest in their life. But what it does in you um, is such a huge... Uh, faith, confidence, a builder that God wants you to see he's working with you. He said, I'll work with you, but I need you to, to do what I show you to do. You know, that's a great word, honey. And, and in, the, in the story of the Good Samaritan, the, the Samaritans were kind of an outcast people. Not kind of, they were outcast. They, had, uh, they, they, they were really initially uh, of the Jewish faith, but then they started to intermarry. They started to come up with their own sets of rules and regulations. And so they, they were just a, 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 a crossbreed in, in the eyes of the Jewish people a crossbreed of, of uh, uh, the distortion of the Jewish faith. A lot of people don't realize this, but Samaria is what's called today the West Bank. And, uh, but, but anyway, the Samarian, Samaritan was hated by the Jews, uh, and I don't think the Samaritans thought all that much about the Jews either. They, none of them liked each other. But get, get the scene right now. You all have somebody that doesn't like you. Uh, if you are focused upon the things of God, that doesn't bother you. You'd like for everybody to like you, but you don't care whether they like you or not because you're going to be who you are. But they may need what you have. And, and the thought would be, why would I want to reach out to them? They don't even like me. They talk about me. They tell people things about me. This is the very scenario that was set up here. The, the man coming from Jerusalem to Jamaica, to Jer Judea. my mouth wasn't working right. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Pam. Pam. I'm gonna put on my my <laughs> glasses here. Ah, oh, there it is. Are you gonna put them on your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Go from Jerusalem to Josh. I want to say Joshua, Jerusalem to Jericho. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he finds him. I'm sure he hadn't planned on this. You know, uh, he's half dead. And here comes the Samaritan. Now, it doesn't say this, but we can envision this. Yeah. He looks up and he says, uh, the Levite wouldn't help me. The priest wouldn't help me. Here comes somebody. Maybe they're going to help me. Oh, crap. I shouldn't have said that word because you told me kids are watching. Okay, don't use this word, kids. But, oh, crap. It's a, it's a, it's a Samaritan. I don't, I, 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 what is he going to do? He's going to be, I'm half dead right now. He's going to finish the job. Instead... It said the Samaritan, and this is what sometimes when I ask God to, show, to to give me the compassion that he has for people, he really does it. Yes, I, I, I just feel it inside. It's like, oh, God, I see it. I see it. And, 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 and the Samaritan had compassion on this person and stopped and helped him, poured oil on his wound, put him on his horse, 
uh, took him to an inn, told the innkeeper, whatever you need to take care of this person. That is what Jesus does yes, for thank us. You, Jesus. And that's what Jesus wants to do through us. And I was thinking about that this is the time like never before. God did not cause this to happen. No. God does not use demonic forces to bring sickness and disease upon this earth. And this is off on a little subject. The, uh, well, go ahead and say it. I feel it's it. Corona, th this coronavirus came out of Wuhan, China and was discovered by Chinese people. And they knew in 2019 it was there and they could have nipped it in the bud. But when you see CCP, Chinese Communist Party, that's not the Chinese people. That's a demonic party that rules the people in China. It's an atheistic organization that rules over millions and millions of people, and they suppress this information. And this demonic virus flowed through to the world because of the Communist Party in China. Research it out, you can find it. Did not come from God. It could have been nipped in the bud by God, and God, in my spirit, was speaking to people over there in China who have since been suppressed, who tried to bring it to the forefront to take care of it immediately. And they suppressed the information. God was warning us through those people that it was coming and they could have stopped it immediately. But because of what they did, the CCP, Chinese Communist Party, the world is paying a price. But we have the ability to reach out to people and that in this time of need, be that Samaritan on the... And I was thinking about people that, you know, we can all reach out to and touch with a phone call and all. It's people that we would never normally think to call. It's like, yes. why, why would I call them? They don't even like me. But it's somebody that we can change their life for eternity, honey. You know, uh, especially the body of Christ, God gives us supernatural um, understanding of yeah. things that the world cannot know. And uh, he'll give us words, uh, the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about the gifts of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is aware of, of everything, and he's the one that communicates what God wants us to know. And so there are words that you may speak to someone that God tells you to talk to that uh, will change their destiny. Yeah. And, and you may not even know why you said it. Because God wants to give revelation to people about what to do, what not to do, when to do it, how to do it. Uh, not always why. Some things God's asked me to do, I still don't know why he asked me to do it. But the important thing is that we do it. And so this is an opportunity to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And the, the Spirit of God that we do it with will be understood by the one we touch that it was God and not us. Because when you get a word from God and you give that to somebody, I've experienced for many years in ministry, it's not a word that I give. Yes. It's a word that comes out of the Spirit. And anything that comes out of the Spirit, out your mouth, yes. has the ability to produce life. Yes. Life uh, abundant in, in a person. And there's been many times we've prayed for people at this altar. Many times, uh, you know, I've been praying. Uh, I thought of this earlier, and I don't know why. I have a son that uh, was was asking God to show him about a, a position, a job. And uh, there were some decisions that had to be made. And uh, he was telling me about it and saying things. And I don't know why, but uh, sometimes when I'm in the tub, I'll just be praying, asking God, praying, talking to the God about things. And I had just hung up from him, and I went in to take a bath, and I, I heard just very clearly something. And so I called him back after I got out of the tub and said, you know, when I was in the tub, I heard this. Oh, you know, he just was floored that, that I heard it, but it was God. <laughs> and so to this day, he'll call me and say, Mom, can you get in the tub? I need some more information. <laughs> you know, uh, I know that seems funny, but, you know, there 
it's a supernatural. We we <clears throat> are uh, uh, in this world, but we are not of it. That's right. And so when we're faced with these kind of major things, I'm, I've never seen anything like this. Uh, I wasn't even thinking that it was going to get like this. Yeah. But it has gotten like this, so I'm not troubled because it's like this. I'm searching and asking God, what do we do about this? Yes. What do we do about this? Well, we bind. We bind sickness and disease, yes. and we loose the power and anointing of God. We lift up the name of Jesus above the name of COVID-19, and, and we forgive those who have come against us, these people in China. All these people that are doing things for the devil are captivated by the enemy. Yes. But who has power to set the captives free? Yes. Jesus. Yes. And so who do we act like? Jesus. And so like the Good Samaritan, we go to rescue them. Uh, I sometimes have to get over my uh, upset over what somebody says, especially on the television, and, and I'm ready to get them. But, you know, that happened once with the disciples when Jesus was on his way to Calvary. Mm-hmm. And, it, and 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 uh, the disciples said, should we call down fire and burn them up? I mean, I'm paraphrasing. And and Jesus said, y- you don't know who I am. You, you don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, Jesus didn't come to burn people up. He came to deliver people from darkness. That's right. And certainly we have That's a world right. of darkness. So whether it's the Communist Party, uh, whether it's your neighbor down the street who doesn't like you, uh, whatever it is that, that that's coming against you, this sickness, this one that's out there now. Yeah. There's viruses all the time in this earth. We need to be pleading the blood of Jesus. Do that's your right. spiritual duty and your natural duty. Yeah. But for heaven's sakes, as believers, we have got to do the spiritual because the unbeliever doesn't know what to do. That is the word of God. That's right. Good word, honey. <clears throat> you know, the the, the whole uh, uh, Samaritans, uh, uh, the story of the good Samaritan starts with a lawyer. And the lawyer is asking Jesus, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? And he said, well, what's your understanding of the law? And he said, well, to love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might. And he says, well, go that and you'll be justified. And he said, yeah, but, but, but who's my neighbor? Because Jesus said, you know, and love your neighbor as yourself. He said, well, who's my neighbor? The, 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 the lawyer wanted to justify himself. That's a common trait of people in the natural realm. We don't justify ourselves. God justifies us through the blood of Jesus. And uh, so at the very end, when Jesus all finished, and he said, uh, which one of these do you think was the good neighbor, or the best neighbor, the person who did the right thing? And said, well, the one who took care of the man. And then he summed it all up in the very end. This is really where Samaritan's Purse got his name, uh, by the founder of Samaritan's Purse. Uh, then go. Go and do likewise. And do likewise. In other words, there's an anointing for us to go and do likewise. That likewise is to be like the Son of Jesus. Romans 8, 29 says that we are all predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ, firstborn among many brothers, and that you and I are predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ. It's stated a little bit differently in Ephesians uh, chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. And again, we're talking about love, igniting the fire of love, feeding into your song, mm-hmm. igniting the fire of love. But it says that, that uh, we are called by God. Everybody say, I'm called by God. I'm called by God. We are called by God to be imitators as dear little children of God. Imitators of God as dear little children and to walk in love as he did. And that everywhere that we go, we say, God, let me see people the way you do. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. But to go and do likewise, honey, and that there are so many people that are, that are hurting, that need what we have, and they're everywhere. Yeah. And that we now have this opportunity to reach out and to touch them with the love of God. Uh, people are free to think whatever they want. They, you know, if they want to think God did this and God did that, that's their business. But we are called to walk like Jesus and say, Jesus said to Philip, I think it was, if you've seen me, yeah, you've, you've seen, seen the, the Father. Father. And I've come to heal people. I've come to set people free. 
and that everywhere he went, he healed all who were oppressed of the devil. The devil does not, the, the God does not oppress people with yeah. sickness and disease. And there, that's why I think it was last Sunday we shared this scripture. Because there are things in my life I don't understand. They happen. I don't understand. I just stick it on that proverbial shelf. Lean not to your own yes. understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your steps. I don't understand a lot of things, but there is one thing that I know. God is a good God. He created us. He loves us, and he's with us, and he's going to go through the storm with us, and we're going to come out on the other side with total victory because we went into the storm with total victory. Yeah, and if you don't feel like um, maybe you're equipped, um, God will equip you. He will equip you with the right words to say, the, the right thing to say uh, in situations sometimes as we've done things for the Lord, um, you think, well, what am I going to say when I do that? And uh, I don't always know what I'm going to say. Sometimes it's better I don't know what I'm going to say because <laughs> yeah. if you plan something, then you try to stay with yeah. what you think. But just open your heart and your mouth and let God fill it because that's what he wants to do. He wants to use us <clears throat> in the darkest hour. It says in Isaiah 60, arise, shine. For the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And yes, there's gross darkness all around you. But we're the light. We're the light and we're the love. Honey, I came up with these seven things that I was praying yesterday. I think you have them on your list too. But seven things that we can all do to let the love of God flow. You come up with your own list. But, 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 but these are things that we can all do. Number one. Uh, patience and time with people. Have you ever noticed sometimes that we can be a little bit impatient? Uh, w w you know, just just a little short, like we shouldn't be. But but to have patience with people, and, and all of us need more patience. Number two, a smile, and a kind, encouraging word. You have a beautiful smile. Yeah, oh, thanks. You, what do I now? If I ever if I see your smile not thanks. there, what, what do I when I don't see your smile? What do I say? Oh, you! I forget what you say, but I, he tries to make me smile. <laughs> I, I told you a long time ago. I said, well, when we met, your resume said, said you had you a winning, winning smile. smile. Yeah. And and sometimes sometimes panel we, we I can do the same thing, but yeah. you know go away and I yeah. say, hey, your resume said you have a winning smile, and inevitably you smile. Yeah. We can make people smile. Yes. And sometimes people say, well, there's nothing funny. I said, yes, there is. Look in the mirror. No, I ain't there. Right. <laughs> Number three, a phone call. <laughs> Yeah. A phone call. A phone call. That's easy to do, isn't it? Yes, and please, um, if you're a younger person, people do like to hear your voice. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe that's because we're older, but um, what I do now, I just FaceTime my kids <laughs> and my grandbaby, and uh, I love it, you know, when uh, my my great-grandbaby, when he, when I come on the screen and he goes, Mima! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it makes me smile. Uh, you know, when you, when, when, when you hear people's voice or you, you can see people, I mean, what technology has done for us, you know, uh, it's just amazing. We're not out of contact with people. We're not isolated, no. for sure, no. uh, in America. Uh, in some nations, yes, they are isolated. Yeah. But we're not isolated, and we have plenty of opportunities. But a phone call, it, you just hear the person's voice. And you can tell in a voice, especially if you know the person, you can tell by their voice how they're doing. Uh, a text, sometimes they can be misunderstood. Have you ever sent a text to somebody and the answer that came back was like, wow, I didn't say that, did I? Uh, you read your text again and, and that's just the way they took it. It went through their filter, like Morgan said earlier, the wrong way. Or sent it to the wrong person. Yeah, that <laughs> happens too. Uh, <coughs> uh, yesterday, uh, Annabelle called. Oh, yeah. and, and as soon as she was done with the call, I turned to Pam and said, that's just a breath of fresh air, uh, whatever she called. Number four, we had, uh, be proactive in meeting a need. Just let the Holy Spirit lead you to think about somebody to call, somebody to buy groceries for, oh. somebody to take money to, or somebody just call up and say, hey, do you have enough money? Yeah, don't be thinking about whether or not you have enough money. You have seed. Everything you have is seed to sow. Number five, manifest kindness to everybody. This is a time to be kind. 
And uh, we can do that, honey. Uh, number six, always ask yourself, what would Jesus do in this situation? What would Jesus do? You know, I try to do that a lot, and it's, it's, it's like instantly you know. Instantly you know about the Spirit. God, God, God is in us. This is the temple. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, so instantly we know. And then the last one, I'm going to let you comment on this. But if you've seen me, this, this should be us. This should be all of you watching right now. If you've seen me, you should see somebody trying and attempting to imitate God. That's what we're called to do. Yes. That's, that, that is, uh, some people uh, they have a hard time with that. But it's, uh, no, that's Ephesians 5. I, I often fail, <laughs> but my mission is to imitate God as a dear little child. That's all of our mission, honey. You know, I was reading in my Faith to Faith just about that one yeah. just recently, and it said, Brother Copeland, Kenneth Copeland said, you know, there's coming a day where believers are going to start looking like God so much that the people are going to say back to us, who do you think you are, God? Yeah, he got uh, that from me. Did he? <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. I, I know he watches and listens and consults you. Uh, the president consults Pastor Bill also. He gets calls. It tells me I've got a White House call coming. There, is, there are White House calls, thank you, Jesus, yes, that they yes. make to pastors to see what they feel like is happening in our nation. Does that speak to the way it was way back in the very, 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 very beginning to know what is God saying to the church? We need to know. Everybody needs to know. But uh, I thought that was interesting that if we all get so full of allowing God to to manifest himself through us, which Jesus said he would do in John 14. I will manifest myself in you if you will believe me and do my commandments. Uh, what would it be like uh, in places if we weren't afraid to say, well, let me pray for you um, wherever we are, not just at church? Uh, what if the words we spoke carried such an anointing that it would just minister to somebody right where they were? There have been times in moves of God in this nation, in the world, where just the very presence of someone uh, brought such an anointing that people were touched everywhere around them. I hope this doesn't come across contradicting faith, but, but I it just had it so real in my spirit as you were talking. God wants us to be just like his son Jesus and to be that example conformed to his image, and that when, when people uh, with, that we see need healing or whatever they need, you know, we tell them, we give them hope. It is the will of God to heal you. It is the will of God to heal you. And what happens in our mind, it'll many times say, well, what if they aren't healed? I remember the first, <laughs> it isn't funny, I don't know why I'm smiling, but the first, when we first started our church, and on Sunday night, we had healing service, and the person, first person I prayed for who was really uh, struggling died. Uh, and I told him that he would live. And uh, it shook me. It really did. Mm -hmm. And what happens a lot of times is we'll, we, we'll be living the Word of God, speaking the Word of God, and then it doesn't come out quite the way we know God wanted it to come out. And it can start to shake our faith and cause us to say, well, maybe I shouldn't have given false hope. There is no false hope. No. All hope is based <clears throat> on the Word of God and the power of Almighty God. And when that fire uh, gets ignited in us of God's love, it, it, we can't, it's not going to be put out. It, I was thinking of this example, and in just a moment, I'm going to talk to you about Resurrection River here and pray for you, and Pam is going to uh, con conclude the service with this song. Uh, uh, um, what was the song? And ignite the Fire. <laughs> ignite the Fire. Uh, but how powerful it is on our stove. And many of you have a gas, uh, a gas stove uh, or electric, but, but this one's gas. Uh, you turn it on to the igniter. And once the igniter hits, it goes like that, and then you've got the little flame, but it's a very small flame. But you can take that and turn it up to high, and it's a hot flame. Mm -hmm. And we are ignited through the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then that ignition has taken place. But the fire may not be where it needs to be. It's time to turn up the fire. And what does that mean? You open yourself up to the Holy Spirit and you say, God, use me. 
however you want. It's not about me, God. It's about you. Not about me. It's about the world. It's not about me. It's about touching people for you. And I want to pray for you that those of you that are out there that don't know Jesus, this would be your moment to receive him. Don't go another day without knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And there may be some of you out there, you're, you're like those prodigals. You know your life is not right with God. Nobody knows better than you that your life isn't right. And I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer right now. And then Pam is going to go to the piano. I think. Are you going to the piano? Yeah. Okay. But but I have a word that I think I need to share. Can I just... share? It. Um, this morning I I heard this in my spirit. Know where the exit is. And um, you know, whenever we go travel, yeah. um, I'm always looking at the back of the door to see where the exit is, because um, there are, there are opportunities when you're in a place that you've never been before. Yeah. And you need to know where the exit is. That's good. And uh, I don't know who out there may be listening, but uh, some of you need to know where your exit is because the place you're in is not a good place. Wow. And you need yeah. to find the exit door. Now, it says in 1 Corinthians 10 that no temptation has come upon you that God will not provide the way of escape. And, and I don't know who it is. I don't know. Maybe it's more than one person. All I heard was, know where the exit is. And sometimes we get so trapped in a situation, and we, we haven't learned to hear the voice of God. We haven't, yeah. we haven't practiced uh, knowing God's direction and listening for the Holy Spirit. And so when God says, this is the way of escape, this is the exit, we, we don't know where to go. We don't know where to go. It's time to know where to go. Jesus is where you go to know where the exit is. And, and I don't know who you are, but it was like people in a, in, a, in a building and the thing catches fire and they've got to go out the exit and they don't know where the exit is. Listen, the devil has, he has um, started moving in a way against us like this virus yeah. uh, that we have got to know where the exit is. We have got to know mm. What God wants us to say, what God mm -hmm. wants us to do, and you learn that by knowing the Word of God. But receiving Jesus Christ is the exit for everyone from everything the devil has planned for your life. And those of you that are hanging with wrong people, it's time to go out the exit. It's time to get out of that place. And God will show you the exit, but you have got to know where the exit is. That's a good word, honey. Lead them on. Lead them to On, receive Jesus. Oh, Father, I thank you today for everybody that's listening. Lord, I thank you that those that um, are trapped in, in whatever it is, uh, alcohol, drugs, what, whatever, pornography, um, uh, just, uh, just criticism. I believe there's people out there that are just caught up in criticism. Yes. Uh, and, and looking for the worst case scenario. And, and, and meditating on things, and they've got their minds so locked yeah. up that they can't find the way out. Jesus is your way out today. He is the exit for everybody. And I pray today that those of you who don't know Jesus would open your heart and hear the voice of God knocking. He says he knocks at the door, and he says, well, I, I want to come in. I want to come in, and I want to help you. And so open your heart today. Let Jesus come in and help you. Those of you that have known Christ and maybe walked away, maybe you're that person that's in captivity and, and you're in that place and you, and you don't even have any idea where the exit is, get a hold of Jesus and he will get you out of that burning building, out of that trap, out of that captivity. Return to him and he will show you the way. I thank you, Father, that those who need to know you today would just confess with their mouth what they believe in their heart and that is that you are the Son of God. So let's pray. Father, thank uh, you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he died for my sins. Thank you that he died for my thank sins. Thank you that you never give up on me. Thank you that you never give thank up Thank you on that me. you are the exit. You are the exit. From doubt and unbelief. From doubt and unbelief. Fear and trouble. Fear and trouble. Bondages. Bondages. Captivity. Captivity. And I need to be gotten free need to be from gotten this free. hold on my life yes. that the enemy has had 
Free me. Free me. Today. Today. I want Jesus. I want Jesus. To be my Lord and Savior. To be my Lord and Savior. Father, I believe. I believe that he is your son. He is your son. That he died for me. That he died for that me. That he rose again. That he rose after again. After he had defeated. After he defeated. The work of the enemy. The work of the enemy. And he lives. He lives. And I live. I live. By my confession of by faith. By my confession of faith. Today. Today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Great word, honey. Great word. <clears throat> Resurrection River. These are songs, almost every one of them, that God gave you mm -hmm. by the Spirit. One of the most powerful, every CD that we have done here has been powerful, but this is one of the most powerful. I, I pray this, I pray this, I play this every day. And uh, one of my favorites on there is Ignite the Fire, but I love them all, I love them all. And uh, we wanna get this CD in your hand if you don't have one. Uh, we're going to post it on our Facebook page, Victory Christmas on our Facebook page, and you'll be able to download it off of that page, listen to it on that page. But also, if you would like this Resurrection River, we want to plant it as a seed, no cost, no charge. Uh, just send us your address, uh, call the uh, church, 765-447-7777 request a copy. Uh, if uh, somebody answers, you can give them the information. If not, just leave a message. You'd like Resurrection River, uh, your name, address, city, zip code, wherever you live. We'll drop one in the mail to you. Then also, we have these uh, phones manned uh, right around the clock, really. So if you have a need, uh, maybe you're part of a church, maybe you're not part of a church, you have a need for food, you have a need for medical supplies, uh, give us a call. We'll do everything we can to help meet that need. God is our source. And I close with these two scriptures as Pam closes out the service here. But it's Philippians 4.13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Jesus is strengthening us as we go through this storm. Philippians 4.19 my God will supply all of my needs. You may be out there and maybe your job has ended. God will supply every need that you have for your job. You may be out there and you may say, I, I just don't know what I'm going to do. God will take care of that and show you because he will supply every need that you have. We love you. God loves you. We'll be back at 6.30 on Wednesday and then next Sunday at 10 o'clock. We're coming into agreement with the president. We'd love to be back and flowing and having services by Easter. We'll leave that with your hands, God. We know that you're in control of this entire situation. But this is my wife now with the song she wrote, totally, ignited, uh, totally anointed, Ignite the Fire of God's Love. We love you.